This is a scene in Gainesville, Florida. O'Connell Center, the O-Dome, the House of Horrors, and the lights come up as moments ago, darkness set in over the starting lineup for Billy Donovan. A packed house. This is the way it looked. A scary place for any opposing team to come in and try to win. That's what Tennessee will try to do tonight. Number 14, Tennessee, and number 9, Florida, clash in a key Southeastern Conference East Division battle. The starting lineups under the spotlights just moments ago. And here is the starting lineup in front of the Rowdy Reptiles for Billy Donovan. Brett Wright and Mike Miller up front with Udonis Haslam, Teddy Dupay at the point, and Dick Kenyon Weeks, the only senior on this team. Well, the senior's got to show leadership, and the way he can show it is knocking down the trifecta tonight. They'll need his three-point shot against Tennessee. Tennessee comes in a 15 and 2 record, 3 and 1 in the SEC. There's Billy Donovan. What a job he's done in his fourth year at Florida. The opposition from Knoxville. Yarbrough and Victor up front with CJ Black. John Higgins, a two guard. Tony Harris playing the point and rounding into quite a point guard, according to Jerry Green. Well, Brad, he's the rocket. He's so explosive. If he keeps under control and can knock down the trifecta like he did in our last game, six for seven, it could be a tough night for the Gators. Jerry Green in his third year, back-to-back 20-win -back seasons. He comes in with the best team that he's ever had. Welcome to Gainesville, Florida, everybody. Brad Nestler and Dick Vitale. You and I used to come here. Nobody would show up. Might be the toughest place in college basketball, at least in the SEC right now. Well, the reason it's the toughest place is like down at Cameron Indoor Stadium. The bottom line is it's players, baby, and they got players. When you talk Michael Miller and Toupe and Nelson and Harvey, it's unbelievable what they can bring off the bench. And that's what makes the place a great place. It brings out fans, baby. It brings out the fans. Look at the Roddy Reptiles. The Roddy Reptiles are going bananas. There's the Rowdy Reptiles. That's what we have to our back. Dick and I get ready for the tip. And Florida with Mike Miller, their sensational sophomore, their leading scorer. The Volunteers of Tennessee have won their last five SEC road games. That ties the school record. But Florida has won 11 straight at home. Something's going to have to give tonight. I'll tell you, Brad, better than that. They're 23 and 1, Florida, in the last 24 games over a two year period with a margin of victory. You ready for this? 28 points per game, That's margin incredible. of victory. Tops. And maybe we'll have another great, great double header like we did, like we did last uh, Tuesday after that Indiana game today with Iowa. Boy, they went right to the wire. Great game of the Big Ten. Tennessee throws it away to open things up. They've been forcing about 21 turnovers a game, have Tennessee. They've taking care of the basketball better than on their opening possession tonight. Jerry Green, 21 and 9 last year, but won the Eastern Division of the SEC with a 12 and 4 mark. Florida in the black uniform, something they wear only occasionally for what they tell us, big games. Well, this one's pretty big. It's a big one here tonight, no question. Dupe for three, it rimmed out. And a whistle and a foul underneath. Florida not making the threes like they made the last two years. In fact, two years ago, they led the nation. But really, they've been utilizing their traps so well and blowing a lot of people away. They've been able to get away without having to utilize the three. Here's some full court pressure. A Florida trademark as well. Tony Harris in the backcourt and a double team. Got to step to the basketball against that trap. Victor kicks it out to Yabro, back to Victor. They work it to Higgins for a three, and he missed it. And Mike Miller, a pie for the rebound. Good action inside, outside. Oh, I love this kid, missed the versatility. Miller threw it away, Higgins with the steal. Higgins, Yabro's going to feed it back inside to Victor. Goes up with a hook and drew a foul. I'll tell you, Isaiah Victor has to be big in this game. Last year, he had a big game against Florida. It was 9-for-9 nine nine on the interior. He was 20-14 and 14 against Vanderbilt in a loss, but he's been a little up and down. So Victor to the line. The last two games, impressive. 32 points, 22 rebounds the last two outings. I tell you, Brad, that first game was really intense. You and I were watching it. Wow. The General and Steve Alford. What a great matchup. You know, all the Hoosier fans are happy. They're Mr. <laughs> Basketball and came here, played him tough. It was nice to see him bring his team into Indiana, but he left with an L, and the General got the W. Now, now Harvey checks in already because the Adonis Haslam has two fouls in the first minute and eight seconds. 
and that is really big. He had his career high last year against Tennessee, 26. Dupe works it all the way to the baseline, and Tony Harris has to grab him on the way by. There's Udonis, the big fella who's dropped about 25 pounds, redefined his body. Not the kind of start he was looking for tonight, though. You dominate that. That's what they call him. They told me to call him the You Dominator. <laughs> Here's Miller for three. Florida still looking for a bucket. Underneath. And let's see. I think Wright might have stepped on the baseline before the shot. Wave no off the basket. There's that full court trap. They face guard. Very tenacious. This kid is the key tonight. He's got to be under control with the rock in his hands. They try to double team him. He's going to pull up and take the three. Got it. I'll tell you, he's going to flat out knock that down. Six for seven in his last game and a blowout over Mississippi. 21 points in that 38 point win over Ole Miss. And they missed a bunch of free throws. You believe that? Yeah. Dupay is going to try to answer. Teddy's second miss from out there. And Wright had the rebound and has had it swiped away by Isaiah Victor. Harris has got a lot of pizzazz to this game. Terry Green told us he wants him to move the basketball side to side. Feed the low post to Victor, double team, kicks back outside. Tennessee will try another three. Black shags down the rebound, but he stepped on the baseline. Black's their interior player, good shot blocker, one of the best in the history of the school. Here comes Ron Slay. This is a kid that enjoys the game. He'll talk to the cheerleaders, the fans, the opposing players. The announcers? He was talking to us <laughs> before the game. I mean, he was really fired up before the game. You can keep your eye on him easily with a white headband. What a great environment. There's that trap by Tennessee coming out trapping. Miller penetrates all the way with a left hand, trying to follow his own miss, and Yarbrough clears off the rebound. He's got great versatility, Miller. He can go to the basket, shoot the jumper. Slay and Harvey now, two freshmen banging down low. Now Jerry Green jealous. He wants to swing the ball side to side. He wants five passes almost in each possession. Oh, he got tripped. He got tripped. And that is the call. Curtis Shaw even sticks his foot out there as if to say it's trip. Harvey picks up the foul. Take a look at the versatility right here. Look at the change of direction. Now he's going to go down the lane. Look at him hanging. He's hanging. He's hanging. There he is right there. Hanging and playing. Oh, look at this here. Wow, Jordan Tong. He's got the Jordan Tong. <laughs> Michael Jordan now with older? Wow. Victor working against Wright to kick it back outside. Kentucky, the first four points of the ball game here in the first three minutes. This is an area of the game that they're really trying to improve on their half-court man-to-man defense. And Tennessee loses it. Tony Harris gets over there, got right in front of uh, enemy territory and lost the ball. Billy Donovan told me, he said, the one area we got to improve on, he said, Brad, we got to work better on our five-man half-court defense. We can't just rely on traps and full-court pressure to convert layups off to steal. This place is packed, and it is hot in here. Oh, it's electric. <laughs> it's not Cameron, isn't it? That's beautiful. Yeah. You and I have been wiping our foreheads for about an hour. I got no hair to wipe. <laughs> Here's Harvey going up with the left hand, and that one rimmed out. Victor, the rebound, clears it to Harris. Ball's on the run. Pull-up jumper. Rebound, battle for it. And foul's going to be on Yabro. I'll tell you one thing. You're not going to see many players in America as quick with the basketball as Mr. Harris. He's like a rocket with the ball in his hands. Substitution for Tennessee number five. Harris Walker going to check into the lineup, and Higgins will go out. See, what they'll do here is they experimented with that down against Ole Miss. This guy will play the point right now, Harris Walker, and a move with Tony, Tony Harris to the number two. Yeah. Get him in position to shoot the ball. He's a kid that can shoot if he gets an open look. Teddy Dupay. I have a better 40 points a game in high school. Nice job by C.J. Black. Throwing Mike Miller knocked it out of bounds. Last year, both clubs in the NCAA tournament. Tennessee wins the East Division, came on strong at the end of the year under Jerry Green, and then they slipped in the NCAA tournament. Yep. Delaware and got blown out by Steve Alford in Southwest Missouri State by 30. Three won't go, right, keeps it alive. On the baseline, another miss. Florida shooting horribly from the field so far. Hey, Isaiah Victor's got some hops to his game. Well, he's dipped set now. Walker at the point. Tony Harris gets to run the court a little bit. He does end up back at the point momentarily and threw it away. 
Bad execution right there, but good defense by Florida. You're right, Florida not shooting well early, and that's really a shock because in this arena, they have shot exceptionally well over the last two years. Their second game against Tennessee last year, they shot only 32%. They're off to an 0 for 6 start tonight. Ooh. Each team took one a year ago. In fact, the last four years, it's been home court, home court advantage. Miller got a nice pick from Wright. Yeah, Wright does the little things, intangible the guy's screen. Miller missed another three, 0 for 7 for the Gators. Not a good shot right there by Miller, not a good shot. I think they call a technical on Tony Harris. Well, he's got to be under control right now. Bruce yeah. Benedict makes the call, and I believe it's going to be a technical foul. Bruce. That's what I thought was Tony Harris was only responded angrily anyway. You can still see the look on his face. Jerry Green, former assistant coach to Roy Williams. Tony Harris from out of Memphis, Tennessee, where they produced so many outstanding players. Corey Bradford at Illinois, Robert O'Kelly at Wake Forest. So the T on Tony. And Weeks to go to the free throw line. He's a 90% free throw shooter. He rips it. I had a tough time on that end. I had the Rowdy Reptile screaming at you me. Did. I don't think he'd get up to <laughs> seven in a row. Kenyon Weeks now is 33 of 34, 97 plus percent. That's not bad. Season. Not bad. Why did he miss one? Why did he miss one? <laughs> Must have had a slump. He had 17 in a row before he missed one. He's got a pretty good string going again. So Florida finally gets on the board. There was the call, kind of a left cross by Tony Harris against Dunnell Harvey. And his team has cut the lead to two. shooting early 4-2 Tennessee 15-40 to go first half along with Vandy this is for supremacy at this point in the season atop the Eastern Division of the SEC Vandy also in there at three and one Florida can move to that and move Tennessee back a little bit I think Brad, my heart goes out to Eddie Fogler at the Jimmy Herrick having those four heavyweights four nationally rated clubs in their division I mean you look at those clubs and Vanderbilt yeah. in 12 days they beat both Tennessee and LSU. Florida and LSU three ranked teams that's a that's a pretty good week and a half. I'll tell you who is a headache to these two clubs. Dan Lange. Lange. Yeah, 31 against both of them. That's exactly right. And a 76-73 Vandy win. Lange had 31, and then we saw him last Tuesday just rip apart Florida. Inside pass to right, double team. He walked with it. Yeah, he took a little step inside. They tried to get a little two-man game going. Lange, one of my unsung heroes, along with Eddie House from out of Arizona State. That ball hit the backboard on the way in, and it comes free to Florida. Yeah, that's a bad entry right there. You don't want to throw directly under the basket. You never want to enter the basketball in that situation. Florida looking to tie it up. Miller does. I'll tell you, I like the way Miller slashes to the goal. Good interior passing, good interior cut. He's got a strong body, Brad. Tennessee more points than, or more turnovers than points right now. That's not a good sign. Five minutes into the game, they almost threw it away again. They're getting rattled yeah, against they the pressure. They did throw it away again. They're getting rattled against the pressure. Dupe with a loose ball, leads it for Miller. Mike's going to work inside, trying to lay it in. And the ball comes loose out to Harris Walker on the run. Walker the lob, a little too deep. And a whistle and a foul underneath. I don't think right now Jerry Green's got to like the pace of the game. The tempo and the pace favors Florida. He's got to be able to slow it down a little more, and that's his strategy. And his kids have played a little out of control. Both teams will go to their benches. Slay and Hathaway coming in for Tennessee. Haslam and Bonner will check in. Bonner for the first time for the Gators. You know, Brad, Bonner was big in their last win over LSU. Hit three big threes in the first half. In fact, none of their starters scored in double figures. That's right. Walker, nice backdoor cut. His Here's first basket. Good three. move without the basketball. One of the lost arts of the game. Little Walker to Diaper Dandy. Makes a nice cut for the goal. 6-4, Tennessee. Almost six minutes in from the Odom. Weeks for three. Ball is still looking to see a triple drop. I've had some big-time athletes on this floor. Weeks knocks it away on the other end. You can tell by the pace of the game, up and down, good quickness. Yeah, you blink and you've missed about 80 feet of basketball. Justin Hamilton coming on the floor was big against LSU. Let him in scoring at 14. In he's just a, 23 minutes. Yeah, he's bad. a pride of Sarasota, Florida. 4A player of the year down there. 
Smith played a Booker High School. Here's Slay backing in. Trying to face up against Bonner. His headband's over his eyes. He missed the shot. Trying to steal it from Miller and almost did. Plays hard, though. You see those headbands? Ludos' kids wore one of the headbands. He said they're never going to wear them again. <laughs> never again. He said they wore them in tribute to Richard Jefferson. He said, I think they really stuffed their brain. They played so <laughs> stupid. He said, get rid of them. One game. That's all it took. Florida looking to tie again. Bonner thought about a three, but Slay came out on him in a hurry. Nice motion game. Good ball movement. Dupe got to look. And another one rimmed out. That one was halfway home before it came back out in a foul. The battle for the rebound is going to be on Bonner. One of the real prides that Billy Donovan has in his club are assists. Right now, they're 11th in the nation, 19 assists a game. He said, we want to get to 20 assists a game. That means guys are moving without the ball, and it means we're sharing the basketball. And we see Brett Nelson for the first time tonight. Uh, freshman sensation from West Virginia has checked in for Teddy Dupe. Trouble for Slay. He's got to get rid of it. Look at the pressure by Florida. Constant. They can rotate so many bodies. They always got fresh bodies on the floor. Walker almost goes down with Hamilton all over him. Hamilton, a good defensive player. Great potential defensively. Yabro underneath. Got it. And a chance for a three-point play. Is it on Haslam? It is. That's three. That is big grab the third. They're going to get him out, Rian Harvey. But how many teams can go to your bench, lose a guy like Haslam, and bring in America's top high school player from last year, Donnell Harvey? That's the recruiting job that Billy Donovan has done here. And Haslam is done for the half. You can just about bet. 12.58 still to go. I think Yarborough's had a solid, solid south, sophomore year as they're stretching out Miller on the sideline. He's matured as a player. He's leading right now in scoring. Second in rebounding, second in assists. Last year struggled a little bit. Substitution for the Volunteers, number 32, Del Baker. So Yarbrough gets the three-point play. And his brother comes in for him. And that's Del Baker. Here comes Nelson now to play the point. He's just got to learn not to make every play an all-star play. He has a tendency to want to be everything shake and bake. And Bonner is Harvey working with the left hand. Mike Miller, they were working on him on the sideline, and I think we're going to get a look at why as he went up for the rebound. Landed a little bit funny. And then reaches for his left hip or his lower back. South Dakota, he found the sunshine of Florida to his liking. <laughs> it's a long way from Mitchell, isn't it? <laughs> Mr. South Dakota. Wow, this is their biggest lead. Florida only four points in the first seven and a half minutes. Here's Bonner for three. They can't get one to go. And remember, the third in the nation is scoring. He got his own rebound and then tipped in. Oh, no, Harvey. Harvey. Oh, Harvey can climb the glass, baby. He's a glass eater. The Rowdy Reptiles love the big fella. Here comes a full court pressure again. It caused a couple turnovers early against Tennessee. Almost threw it away again. You've got to find the open side against this trap. You've got to bring the ball away from the trap. Baker had it tipped. Almost stolen. They really take you away from running your offense, Brad. They don't let you get into your half court rhythm. Plus, by the time you get there, there's only 10 seconds on the shot clock to work with. Finally, they tried to feed the post, and Harvey with a steal. They anticipate so well, stepping those passing lanes. Brett Nelson, little shake and bake. Now it's Harvey with the left hand. A little too strong off the glass. That's the one area he's got to work on, his little touch around the basket. He's got to develop a little medium-range jump shot. He's so fired up right now, I don't think he can pull the string. He is pumped up. He only played 41 seconds against Vanderbilt in that loss. Missed three practice sessions, and therefore, I believe he didn't play him. Higgins, off-balance, drilled one. They really like Higgins. They speak in great superlatives about the young guy. Had a major injury as a junior in high school, but they stayed with him in Shaker Heights out of Ohio, and he's become a solid player. There's a three. He can score. He and Dupay between them scored better than 70 points a game in high school. That 
brings the crowd up, cuts the lead to two. Florida's first three-pointer by their freshman, Brett Nelson. He had a big game against BMI. I'm coming out for it. He didn't miss a shot. And 19 in that one. Slay looking for room to operate. Bonner with a steal. The outlet to Parker. Tennessee's got eight turnovers. Nelson will try another. Too strong this time. And Higgins with a rebound. One thing Florida doesn't get you into, let you get into a situation with good execution. Look at the defensive fight. Hamilton, I love the way he slides and glides. Beats guys to the spot. Walker off balance. Harvey another rebound. He's a rebounding machine. The outlet to Hamilton. Here comes Gators two on two. He leaves it out. Parker on the baseline. He is finally going to take it. And he's short with it. Tennessee coming back with a two-point lead. Baker, nice drive by Del Baker. Well, Del Baker and his brother, they went out to California and worked on their game all summer, and they came back as mature players, according to Coach Jerry Green. But Tennessee back to a four-point lead. Tony Harris waiting to come in, as is Isaiah Victor. I'll tell you what's really impressive in their resume. They've been five consecutive games on the road in the SEC. Is Nelson lights it up again. Okay, that's impressive, too. That's impressive. With a defense right in his face, he buries another three and cuts the lead to one. Nice when you can rotate point guards like Nelson and Dupin. So Florida's only two of 12, but the last two by their 6'3 freshman. Their other freshman, Harvey, not doing bad on the glass. Tennessee by one. Reptiles enjoying themselves tonight. Tennessee leading Florida, though, 36-33 with a minute 20 remaining in the first half. Over there in that scorer's table, a guy that's been there for a long time, Casey Upshaw, we know, is watching over in Arkansas tonight, waiting the results on a bone marrow scan. Uh, he's worked here a long, long time, and everybody over on that Ladies scorer's table, Casey, so wishes you, you the best, and so do we. Yes, sir, we send our best, and our prayers are with you, Casey. You're out the door. Thank you. Florida with an opportunity to tie it the way they've been shooting. It would be a three-pointer that could tie things up. And that's what they've been launching the last several times down court. Dupay almost had another one. Instead works inside and has to kick it back around the perimeter. Weeks for three. And up on the rim was Parker. Offensive interference. Yes, sir. Interference. I'll tell you one thing. I like the three-guard setup they have now. They got Nelson and Dupay playing together. Yeah. They both can shoot the basketball and both the threats with the ball. Both guys average a total of 70 points a game on a high school level. Look at the shooters they got out there right now. Dupay, Weeks, Nelson, and Miller. And that's not taking anything away from Donnell Harvey. But... And Weeks tips it away to Dupay. Back to Weeks. Oh, I don't need the three, baby. I'll get the deuce up to steal. Oh, they love the pressure. Run, press, and shoot. That's their style. Under a minute. Balls by one. I'd love that style. I would love to play that style, Mr. Nestler. I'd get tired playing that style, Mr. Vitale. <laughs> Blocking foul down low on Dupay. Well, see, I would let you run, run, run. Yeah. I'd just go to the line and shoot the three. <laughs> there was another look at the steal by Dupay and immediately zipped the pass back inside to Kenyon Weeks for the slam. Well, for all you young kids out there, you see what Dupay did? Look how his head is up. Look how his head is up. You can see he has eyes. He's looking up. He's not looking at the floor. Victor. Four out of five from the free throw line for a guy that came in shooting 57% from the stripe. He's had a heck of a first half. Ten points already for Isaiah. Came in averaging ten points a game. He played extremely well both games against Florida last year. 21 in the first game, 17 in the second. So this is a club he likes to play against. And he's given his team again a three-point lead with right now a half minute remaining in the half. Well, you know, he played really well earlier this year. And then he went through a little slump, bounced back against Vanderbilt, even though they lost. He had 20 and 14. He's got a little spark to his game tonight. So Florida's going to play for the final shot. The perfect the situation is they'd hit a three, and we'd be tied at halftime, and the crowd would go crazy, and they'd have some momentum going into the locker room. We'll see what happens. Oh, this is going to be deja vu Tuesday on last Tuesday. Nelson drives and still and scores on the baseline. That's a big-time move, baby. That night for Dandy just took it to the goal. At the buzzer. Oh, oh, went oh almost went down. Oh, forward by Matt Smith. Three fouls, 11 points. His team in front. But Florida cuts it to one. It's the Florida Gators still 
trailing, but Mike Miller with that last layup has made it a one-point game. Miller leading scorer with 13 right now for Florida. Isaiah Victor's got 15 for Tennessee. Tony Harris held scoreless this half and in foul trouble with 11. Out there, Brad, they had a tough break. Tennessee earlier this year with Dennis Reinstaff for the first game blew out his knee in the very first game after red shirting from Virginia Tech. And then you talk about tough luck. In the month of June and July, he loses his mom and yep. dad yep. to a battle against cancer. Our yep. hearts go out to Dennis. A really, really tough year for him. Torn ACL. They had surgery on that in mid-December. He would have been the starting two guard instead of John Higgins in this lineup. There's the foul trouble. Aslam and Harris each with four. Bonner off the inbound pass. Missed the jumper and Harvey foul. I'll tell you, he's a big time offensive rebounder. And oh, does Tennessee miss Tony Harris. That fourth foul on Harris was really big. 52 on steal by Dupre. Here come the Gators, baby. He's going to penetrate it. Here come the Gators. Get a T.O., baby. Get a T.O. Now it's getting scary. Now it's becoming the house of horrors. 54-51. Oh, you can feel the energy and electricity, Mr. Nestler. 30 seconds. Timeout. Timeout. Tennessee. Ten straight Florida points. Here was the miss by Bonner, but number four was waiting in a perfect spot. He is so strong and so physical. And this diaper dandy is really a major factor on the interior. And I said a little bit earlier, they really, in their case, they can have a Haslam sit out because of a Harvey, whereas they can't afford to lose a Tony Harris, Tennessee. I think Teddy Dupay's a little bit excited. I love those kind of guys. I love those emotional guys that play a little wacko, play with a lot of enthusiasm. He has a passion and a love for what he's doing. Three-pointer won't go. Woods keeps it alive, and he's fouled. Dupe and Weeks are both there. It's going to be Dupe with a foul. Well, you look at Florida's bench. They outscored LSU 49-20. Tonight, 23-6. I mean, their bench are like starters. Yeah. And Brett Nelson just checked in, and he was really one of the spark plugs in the first half for Florida. Terrence Woods, a good shooter, was a 2 a player of the year. Missed that one, though, and a rebound is Bonner. Outlet to DePay. Florida looking to run. It's Weeks who uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh. And he missed it. Woods with a rebound. And that's the one guy you'd want to shoot, even though he's been struggling the last three or four games. He's a 40% shooter from the three-point line. The zone has bothered Tennessee a little bit, the 2-3 zone. Florida's rattled off 10 straight points as in we approach the 10-minute mark. They lead by three. Walker looking to get rid of it. Almost had it stolen. Here's Victor. Yarbrough is open. And he missed it from outside the arc. Bonner, another rebound. Wait a minute. They're going to call foul on Bonner again. Over the back, maybe on C.J. Black. That's the call. That's four on Bonner. It's going to be interesting to see when Jerry Green pulls the trigger and brings Harris back on. So oh, the shove. There's the shove. That's a good call. Yeah, good call right there on the baseline by Curtis Shaw. Well, Tennessee's going to sink or swim right now with their leading point guard, Tony Harris, off the bench. I really salute him for making that decision because this can get away from him. This can get away. you got to go down with your big guy if you're going to go down. He can step in the gap and shoot the ball, Harris. Victor. Offensive foul. Good job defensively by Florida, rotating into the lane, taking that drive away from Victor. He likes to favor the right side when he makes that drive. Now watch this. Look at him. Look at him right now. He's going to anticipate. Harvey's going to anticipate the drive. See, anticipate. Right here. See it? There he is. Anticipates. Beats him to the spot. A little acting job. Maybe a little Denzel Washington right there. Hey, go see Hurricane. It was phenomenal. I don't give it a four star. I give it a five star. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, go see it. Phenomenal acting job by Denzel Washington. Academy Award. 
Three-point lead past the midway point of the half. Dupay had set up for a three, spins the pass inside to right. Now Weeks on the... Oh, what, 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 what a great pass on the inside. Unselfish basketball, baby. Right down the gut of the defense. That's team basketball. Move the ball, move without it. Yes, you should give him a hug. Right, you're right down the gut of the defense. Look at right. Right kicks it down the gut. And there's his buddy, Mr. Weeks, jamming that baby home. Oh, nice pass by Brent Wright. Simple cut down the lane. Here, off the backside on a mystery. Dupay with a rebound. And we got C.J. Black down holding his face on the other end of the court, so the officials stop play. And the trainer hustles out, as will Coach Green. C.J. Black, a senior. Experienced player on the inside, a power guy, shot blocker. Looks like Harvey with the left hand trying to battle for that rebound. Got him. Hi, Phil Swift here. Freeform. He was perhaps the most brilliant coach who ever lived. Sometimes behind great success, there are things that we'd rather not know about. I'm not here to f around this week. I had an eyewitness saying Coach Knight grabbed Neil Reed by the throat. Our sports director came out of the office and said they have a tape. What if I told you that the tape was only half the story? 30 for 30 presents The Last Days of Night, tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. on ESPN and streaming live on the ESPN app, sponsored by American Express. I put a spell on you. Black might be heading either to the locker room and certainly the bench. He had a big game. He goes to the end of the bench, they're going to continue to look at his eye. He had a big game against Vanderbilt, had 18 against Vanderbilt. The all-time shot blocker leader at the school with 194 coming into this game. So Hathaway checks in. He's got to keep under control right now, Hathaway. Don't need his presence with Black out of the game. Trouble getting it inbound. Nice job defensively by Tennessee on the inbound play. It's Florida by five. Getting some nice movement without the ball right now, Florida. There's another example. Cutting without the ball. Right. And lane violation. Three second lane violation. Florida, not too many turnovers tonight. They forced a lot more than they've had themselves. Mike Miller hustles to the scorer's table to get back in. Yeah, Billy Donovan wants to get him on the floor. He uses passing ability, scoring ability, comes in for weeks. Billy Donovan, what a job he has done. I'll see his counterpart. Got it sat next to him on a bench with Rick Pitino. Herb Sendick tomorrow against Duke. This might be the best team North Carolina State has in the 10-year run game, Mr. Sendick. Foul on Brett Nelson. Even on that play, Nelson defending Tony Harris. Tony Harris gave the freshman a little shove after it was over. The emotions running high for the battle the tie Vanderbilt for the top spot in the SEC East. In fact, if Tennessee wins, they'll be all alone on top by a half game. If Florida wins, there'll be a tie with Vandy with Tennessee dropping back a half game. That's the competitive juices these clubs have. 15 and 2, 13 and 2. Really want to win. That's what it's about in these programs. Baker had to tag that one down and would have hit Dick in the head. Yeah, he would have made like a flanker right there. Tony Harris, wow. Are downtown, you Gainesville, missed it. He shot that from Ocala. He shot that from Wayne Lucas's horse form. <laughs> Here's Miller. Pretty long one of his own, rimmed out. Weeks keeps it alive. Can you Weeks give him a rebounder out of the guard slot? He just double dribbled. He put the ball on the yes, floor with both hands. That's a good call. Yes, he did. Double I mean, this is beyond the NBA line where he shoots a three. Are you serious, Tony? Freeze it. I mean, look at this. Here's the line. Are you kidding me? I mean, that is beyond an NBA three. In his defense, I think there was three seconds on the shot clock, but it's still a mile away. Florida with a rebound, the ball, and the lead by five as we approach eight minutes. Tennessee not executing in the last five minutes like they did earlier. This guy always wants to make a spectacular play. Look, he's ready to make the 
Jason Williams, rebirth again. Jason was something special. We saw him one time against Kentucky. Right inside on a nice feed for Miller. I'll tell you, I like Brent Wright. Doesn't get a lot of publicity. He's active. He can guard people. He rebounds. Biggest lead of the night for the Gators. Harris trying to quiet the crowd and get his team back in, and that's what he does. And that's what a BT Beer does. A star player makes the big play. Live attempt, and that was an attempt at too big a play by Brett Nelson. He just pointed at his head. That's exactly what you were talking about, Dick. Always he throws it to, away. Always trying to make the all-star play the spectacular play. Tony Harris playing with foul trouble, but just buried a three that with seven minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the game has cut Florida's lead down to four. Take a look at the ball handling right now. Florida making the extra pass. Constantly looking for the open man. Looking for cutters. And there's an example. This good ball movement, good player movement. That usually means a good shot. Tennessee trying to run back in uh -oh. this game. And no foul call as Harris and Harvey go out of bounds. That's Harris good. got to breathe a sigh of relief there. And so did Coach Jerry Green. As you and I are going to see some great guards on Thursday. I can't wait. Scooby Penn and Mr. Red, Red ho hooking up Team together. Leads. Yes, sir. Charlie Bell. Bell. Yep. Morris be Peterson. Fun. It should be fun down at Columbus, Ohio. Looking down to see Perp, Perp Street in the gang. Yep. We'll be there as part of a triple header on Thursday night. Dick and I will open things up at 7 o'clock with the Buckeyes and the Spartans. Here's the Gators and the Vols. The Gators with the lead by four. They're always catching in triple threat position where you can pass, shoot, or drive. Nelson had it stripped away. And a foul to follow. Both by Nelson. I think what happens with Brett Nelson, he comes on the floor and he tries to make things happen immediately as CJ Black working on an eye with some ice on it. The Tennessee in a bonus with 7.03 remaining. The problem is they're not a great free throw shooting team there's a rebound story as Tennessee had control in the first half Florida's answered in the second half Isaiah Victor has been the answer all night for Tennessee 15 points to lead them in scoring and he continues to be hot from the free throw line he's hit five straight and six of seven he's done a good job for Jerry Green who directed Tennessee to its first back-to-back -back NCAA tournament bids in 99 since 1983 Isaiah missed the second one. It's a three-point ball game. They need a defensive stop right now. Martin's got to go inside and outside with Harvey. Dupay, did he get a timeout? He got a call. 30 second timeout. Yes, he was heading out of bounds, out of control. Timeout. He got the timeout call in midair. Brett Favre. This is the ball going out of bounds. Here's Teddy Dupay, hang on the air, call of the T. Oh, so many people hate that rule. Hate that rule. So a three-point game, 6.48 remaining with Dick Vitale, Brad Nessler. Nice to have you along with us from the Odo. The Odo. Place that's uh, fun to watch a basketball game. Tonight in the first half, Tennessee led by as many as seven. Florida's come back. The equalizer was a three-point shot in the first half, but now they're just playing solid basketball. Yeah, just playing good ball movement, good player movement, very solid play. I mean, it's been great now on Tuesday. Last week you had Michigan That's State, right. Indiana, and we had Auburn, Kentucky. Tonight, that unbelievable matchup. The young guy comes home, Steve Orford, gets beaten a real nail-biter by his boss, the general. Just a great, great matchup, and now this game here coming down a stretch. Great doubleheaders. Highest scoring teams in the SEC. That's not going to be the case tonight right now in the 50s. For the last five games, they've only allowed Tennessee 58 points a game. Dupe. And Some shot clock one. violations to Florida with another turnover. And that's exactly what Dick was talking about. Tennessee needs to stop. They'll take it any way they can get it. If that means Teddy Dupe taking a 35-footer, then that's the case. A good job defensively by Tennessee. I'll tell you, one thing the Gators have going for them, they have balanced minutes with their players. they got 10 Gators who are averaging 12 minutes or more. But they have rested players all the time. Nine of those, 15 or more again. Now that is pretty deep. They've used a bunch of guys tonight. We showed you the disparity. On their bench scoring tonight, as was the case. We're going to see now if this crowd can cheer them home with a W on their home floor. Or can Tennessee break that last eight games? 
Missed eight times they've been here. They've left with an L. Trying to get the game clock reset. As you can see, it's at 19.59, and uh, Dick and I don't even want to be here that long unless wow. it's overtime, and I'm sure Rich and Stewart are going to wait that long for Sports Center. So. Man, they had a real controversial game last night on ESPN. Miami and Villanova at the buzzer. Heartbreaking loss for Villanova. Billy Raftery and company on that game. Now we got it right. Haslam still sitting with that fourth foul. Tony Harris, tough catch on the baseline. We'll have to see him rip another three. It'll be Higgins instead. And it came out on him. Battle for the rebound. Jump ball. Possession arrow is going to stay in Tennessee's hand. And Hathaway walks over to the official side. I like that call. That's a good call. <laughs> he averaged seven rebounds a game as a freshman. And South, we have tough luck with a shoulder injury. He had a blood clot in his shoulder. CJ Black looks like he's done for the night. Florida staying with the zone. Just over six to play. Three-point ball game. Gators in front. Tony Harris, another bomb. And the rebound is Harvey. See, I don't think you need that shot, Brad. That is way out of three-point range. I mean, that's out of Reggie Miller's range. I mean, Reggie, we know, can flat-out shoot it for Indiana when he did it at UCLA as well. That one he didn't have to take shot clockwise. Mike Miller pulls up and takes one, and that doesn't go either. And the rebound is Gavro. Mike will fall him back on the shot. Not shooting the ball with confidence. You can see it's not being shot with a world of confidence. Yeah, last three games he's been kind of quiet. Although he does have 13 quiet points done. It's a two-three zone. Yarbrough for the tie. Got it. It's in Yarbrough steps right in the gap. I really like this kid. He plays under control. He's got good quickness. Well, here we go. 58-58. What we thought it would be, baby. Two of the best in the SEC coming down the stretch here. Harvey wants it down low. Miller on top. Now they get it to Donnell. We're going to get Hathaway with a left hand. That's where good things happen, Mr. Nestler. Get the ball in deep. Get it to a guy that can finish around five feet from the goal. And Harvey can do that. That is his strength. 11 for the freshman. Gives his team a two-point lead. Yabro for the Tennessee lead. Swiped out of the air by Harvey. And the outlet pass. Miller's open. He got it to him. Oh, what a good job. By Victor. Wow. What a super play by Isaac. Say a Victor hustling back with the block shot. A good angle. That looked like a sure thing. And number 44 came flying out of nowhere. Here he is on the offensive end. Hathaway in close. And a blocking foul. Going to be called on Harvey. There's that long outlet from Harvey to Mike Miller. It looks like a layup coming up. Well, he's anticipating that. Here comes Mr. Victor with the great angle. He had the excellent angle for the block shot. No body contact. Got those long arms and that quickness and that agility. Charles Hathaway, 61% free throw shooter this year. Oh, free throws, free throws, free throws. How many times have we said it, huh? Oh, that's just such an unbelievable problem. Look at Jerry. At least he's keeping his hair. It's not falling out. <laughs> it's getting grayer by the minute, though. Well, tonight, 13 for 21. At least they're getting opportunities. They're going to win a lot of games this year, Tennessee, no matter what happens here. Missed them both. Could have had a tie basketball game. Miller beating Haslam and Hathaway. Good hustle. You know, those, those folks thought those were good seats down there. Until they had a 290-pounder coming at them. Take a look at this three now. We're going to see by Harris. Now watch this three. I mean, we're going to reverse the ball. Now look at it. Look at the shot clock is. 21 right. seconds. A lot seconds. of time. Now look where he's shooting from. I mean, way, way behind the three. Got to you gotta know time and you gotta know where you are on the floor at all times. Under four minutes now, two point game. Gators in front. Brad Nessler, Dick Vitale, and our ESPN crew at the O'Connell Center, Gainesville, Florida. Dupe had to get rid of it. Five on the shot clock, stripped by Victor. What a game he's had in both ways. Give it up, bring it back out. He's gotta bring it out, get it away from traffic. Harris 
for the lead. Tipped in by Victor. Isaiah Victor's doing it all for them. Defensively, rebound in, scoring on the inside. Tied at 60. 320 left in regulation. You got a good one. Don't leave this one, baby. SEC, here it is. Bay got three momentarily. Harris playing with four fouls. Oh. Bay digs into the hole. What a nice little stutter step on the inside. A little delay. Freeze the. He wants to go right. Loves Victor going right. Swatted out of there by right. And not a bad move by Victor. Decided to take it against Haslam, who's got foul trouble. And now we got a timeout. Isaiah Victor kept Tennessee in the thick of it, but it's Florida leading by two with 2.58 remaining. Score 62 60 Florida. And Tennessee with two timeouts remaining. You see the foul situation. Possession arrow is Florida. Higgins, Yabro, Black, and Slay on the floor for Tennessee. Slay's going to take it. And didn't get the roll, but the follow by Yabro. Nobody blocks that one of the lower starts in the game of college basketball. There's Vincent Yarborough with the offensive rebound, the second lead, leading rebounder on the team, and nobody lays a body on him. Two and a half minutes left in a elbow foul on Slay working against Brent Wright. It's a mailbox masher. We're going to take right. This Slay now with a little miss. Now look at the offside. Here he comes from the offside. Vincent Yarborough. Nobody lays a body on him. The coaches work on that and work on that and work on that. Block out. Block out. Find your man. The O-Dome quiets for Wright to take the free throw. The 6'8 junior missed it and has left the door open for Tennessee. This is almost a quiet to the crowd. Yeah. Look at one of those. Remember, Vandy is sitting at home with a 3 and one conference mark saying, who's going to join us? Will it be Tennessee to go to the head of the class by a half game or Florida to tie the Commodores for the top spot in the East? That's what's at stake right now. Both teams ranked in the top 14 in the nation. Florida number nine with an 11-game home winning streak. Tennessee's won five straight conference games on the road. Three on the shot clock. Yarbrough's got to toss it up there. He did hit the iron, and then a follow. Again, an offensive rebound. Again, nobody blocking out. And the Vols lead by two, courtesy of C.J. Black. Well, the two last, last two possessions, a poor job by Florida in executing on how to block out. It's a big possession for Florida. They really need a deuce in this possession. And Wright is fouled before the shot. CJ Black came back on the floor, is able to contribute. I guess that eye is okay now. Little puff. Ron Slay picked up that foul, and he goes to the bench. You know, Jerry Green was talking about uh, to us about experience, and they have experience, and that's certainly big, especially playing on a road in an environment like this. Well, they started 14 and one, which was the second best in school history. Nick mentioned they lost to Tulsa in the championship of the Puerto Rico Classic in a game where they shot poorly from the stripe and Tulsa shot 60% from the field. Tulsa right hits that one. Tulsa's really good. I'll tell you, they're gonna really be an outstanding team. A threat to watch all year long, including the NCAA with guys like Hill, and Brandon Kurtz, Harrington, and Osinski. Brent Wright had missed his last free throw. He hits a couple there, though, and they were big ones. They're playing the two big guys together right now. Haslam and Harvey, the eight square. A minute and a half to go. We're tied at 64. And the Rowdy Reptiles are up, baby. They're up. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Black underneath. He's going to get a second chance. And pushed out. They are really beating Florida to the second shot on the offensive glass. Three possessions in a row now. They have absolutely beat Florida to the ball. And Haslam is gone. Here's our guy that measures it, walks it off. Now goes back to the line. He's backed up about a foot. It's hard to tell with his feet. They're so big, but I'd say it's about a foot behind the stripe. Well, well it's the, more than that, actually, when you get that angle. Some of the people that weren't with us earlier, what he does, he goes under the basket and then marches off and counts and gets a little feel as to where he wants to shoot from. 
Aslam has fouled out. Udonis Not only a good four night. points tonight. Nope. There, he marked the floor with a little piece of paper so he knows where he puts his... Now he's got his toe back. I guess it was his gum. Whatever he was chewing on. Look at this here. He marks it one foot away. I'll tell you one thing. Oh, no, no, he's got his gum right there. Oh, he missed it. He should have had a bigger wad of gum. Big possession right now by Florida. Tie basketball game. Teddy Dupe, an outstanding free throw shooter with the ball in his hands. 64-64, and we are under a minute. minute remaining. Lob inside to Harvey. Harvey with a left hand. Got it. I tell you, he really can operate down in deep. He is so strong in deep. They're going to watch Harris. He can flat out shoot that three. Got a matchup on him. Playing man-to-man -man right now. Came out of the zone. Harris is looking for a screen on Dupe, and nobody's coming out to help him. They got a one four set. They're trying to get an isolation. Jerry Green says, let's go to work on offense. Quit looking for a pick. Yabro on the baseline, partially blocked. Portable. Not good execution right there by Tennessee. He didn't get the shot they want. Get in here. Hurry up. Get in here, says Billy Donovan. Bonner trying to get in, and he got in. But he's substituting offense and defense. He wants Bonner on the floor for offense. Dell Baker's going to check in for Tennessee. Just a little bit of tension here right now. A lot of emotion, a lot of intensity. So Brent Wright will inbound with Victor in his face. Got it to Dupe. Harris trying not to foul out. Dupe trying to foul him out. Did a great job spinning away from the pass. He gets it. And he gets number five. If this baby were to go to overtime, Tennessee would be in trouble without Harris. He leaves with 21.6 to go in the ball game. You wonder what this game would have been like if Tony Harris wouldn't have gotten the technical called on him. That was really the one that sent him to the bench early in the first half. Yeah, because it counts as a personal. Right. Years ago, that was not part of the formula. Fouled out with 14 points and limited action. He led Tennessee along with Victor in that first half. They each had 11, but Tony has only one three-pointer in this second half. Uh, they really miss his presence on the floor, even though he's taken a few ill-advised threes. He is such a valuable player to this Tennessee team. He creates for other people. His presence allows other people to get open because he draws double teams. The Teddy Dupe will step up a 77% free throw shooter this year, 81% last year. That means a one possession game if he hits this and Tennessee gets the ball. They're going to trail by only three. Unless Florida gets an offensive rebound on a miss, then it's a whole different story. You watch him in a pregame. The guy doesn't miss a free throw. I mean, he's just thinking too much. Just go up there and shoot that baby. Relax. Missed them both. And now Tennessee with the ball. Under 20 seconds. They can win it with a three. They can send it to overtime with a deuce. Win it with a three. Timeout in the front court by Higgins with 14.4 to play in regulation. They really wish they had Harris, but they don't, so they gotta go with what they have right now. Higgins is an excellent passer. He's a guy that can make something happen for someone to, to get open. And it's the offensive rebound you gotta really be concerned with. I've seen so many times the missed shot, and it's the second shot right. that comes back to haunt you. Teddy Dupe, normally at the free throw line in the late stages, no problem. Missed it, and Harris, who just fouled out by sending Dupe to the line. Ooh. Oh, oh, Tony, 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 you don't need that, Tony. Sixty-six, sixty-four. Florida in front. Tennessee ball. Fourteen point four left. Higgins at the point with Harris on the bench. He's an excellent passer, Higgins. He can create for people. Almost threw that one away. Gets it back, Hamilton all over. And he got a pick, off-balance shot. Doesn't go. Who's going to get the rebound? Victor. Throws it up and in at the buzzer. And isn't it fitting? He's been sensational all day, King Victor. He's been sensational all day long. Point three seconds remaining. Isaiah Victor, as Dick said, has been the man. That's his 20th point. 
And it's 66-66. This thing's going to overtime. And Brad, we just talked about the second shot, the offensive rebound, the most dangerous play after a situation like that. Nobody blocks out. Here comes Isaiah Victor, comes up with the loose ball and has the presence to be able to be under balance and to be able to turn and shoot that little baseline jumper. He's been a star of stars all night long. Boy, has he ever. King Isaiah. Oh, yes. Hopkinsville, Tennessee, Isaiah Victor with a huge shot just before the end of regulation buzzer. 0.3 seconds left. Florida's going to throw it the length of the floor. And nobody home on the other end. We go to overtime. We go to overtime. I remember Tennessee playing a little bit too short now without Tony Harris. 66, Tennessee. 66. 66-66 to end regulation. A lot more basketball in the SEC coming up when we come back. Well, we're going to overtime. Tied at 66. Brad Nessler and Dick Vitale back at the O-Dome where things... This is fitting, right, to go to overtime well, after the way we've had it tonight? Well, you know what? They don't block out. See, you got to get up like this, <laughs> yeah. and you got to block the guy out. You can't let him get inside for that rebound. Isaiah I mean, Victor oh. in the last seven seconds was the guy as we watch it. The off-balance shot. Now, here's what Dick was talking about. They Everybody just go goes up. Nobody blocks out. Isaiah Victor just wheels and delivers as he's done all night long. No, the last three possessions, Florida's been burned. If I was Billy Donovan tomorrow, when I get to practice, I'm, we're going to block out all day long to learn the art. When a shot goes up, you find your man, and you lay a body on him, and you don't let him get inside position. You wonder now, though, with Tony Harris on the bench having fouled out, although Haslam has fouled out, too, a starter for Florida. If the Gators don't have the edge, they're at home. They've got Teddy Dupay with no foul trouble. They've got Mike Miller with no foul trouble. Hey, one thing, Billy Donovan right now, being at home, to me, definitely has the edge and has the double edge with Harris out for a five-minute period of time. Yeah. Hey, that guy could shoot the rock when he played Billy Donovan. He was automatic. 1987 went to the Final Four with Steve Alford. That was the year he led Indiana to a national championship. There's a foul situation. Remember, Sports Center follows our game. Whenever it's over for well, Gainesville. Stewart and company are waiting there anxiously. They can go grab another cup of coffee. We got five minutes more. Dupay's going to pull up jumper on the opening. And Harvey follows. Mr. Harvey, I'll tell you, the offensive rebound has been effective in this game. Coming down the other way, Yabro misses and Miller clears it off. Harvey with that basket now has 15 points off the floor to bench. It's nice when you can substitute and bring a Harvey in for a Haslam. He gets the ball down deep. He is so tough to defend. Nice give and go with Miller and Wright, who works the baseline, trying to kick it out to Kenyon Weeks. And knocked out of bounds with 16 on the shot clock. Momentum is so big when you go to an OT. Uncle Mo really is so big if it swings your way. Gives you such an emotional lift, especially early in the OT. Lob underneath, trying to get it to Harvey Black with a nice job fronting him and picks off the pass. That was a Marconi special. I mean, that was telegraphed all the way. I even see that with my one eye. He's going to make that pass. CJ Black apparently seen it with one eye, too. He went out with an injured eye earlier in the second half. Florida back in the zone, and usually when you're in a zone, you don't have blockout responsibilities, and it creates a problem. Victor and Baker, now Higgins. Remember, Harris is fouled out. Their key three-point shooter, Brett Wright, trying to knock it away, but Yarbrough slices through there and drew a foul. See, I think Vincent Yarbrough's a little bit too unselfish, Brad. I think he's got to look a little bit more to be an offensive threat. He's got good offensive ability. It's just been incredible. What a day in college basketball tonight. Well, we had the general. And right. we had his proto They shook Steve hands Alford. if you missed it. <laughs> Bob it was like Knight hide and seek seek. attack on Steve Alford and his dad. It was like hide and seek. Tonight, no problem with Billy Donovan, Jerry Green. I don't know if they're going to. It's going to be a late shaking hand situation, though, when this one's over. Because we're in overtime. Real late. And Yabro misses a free throw. I can't believe the way some of these guys go to the line and brick on these free throws. All Americans in high school. Here's a look at Vincent Yarbrough. He's a 75% shooter. Came back strong this year. A lot more mature. Worked out in California with his brother. Taking his time on the second one. And delivered it. That cuts the Gators' lead 
to one, 68-67 in overtime. The big orange are going to be hurt from all year long in the SEC. They've got a week off before their home game next Tuesday night. I'll be up in Knoxville for that one. Yes. That'll be an exciting Auburn. one, too. Yeah, get ready for Auburn. Nice crossover dribble by DePay. Dribbled right into a double team, though. Trying to leave it for Mike Miller. And stolen away by John Higgins. Higgins always seems to be under control. He's moved over to the point guard slot now with Harris out of the lineup. It's Higgins, Yabro, Baker. Victor and Black on the floor for the Volunteers. Baker, a good wing player off the bench. We're down to three minutes remaining right now in overtime. Victor's trying to face the basket. Kicks outside to Higgins. Takes one step. Got clear. Missed the three. And it's Florida ball. Lower the basketball. Florida out there with Juppé, Harvey, Miller, Weeks. And right, and it's Teddy Dupay taking his time as he'll cross the timeline with about 2.45 left. Sports Center follows our overtime. Boy, Harvey and Black banging down low right now. They're trying to get Harvey down inside. Miller thought about a three and now drives and kicks it back out to Dupay. They're doing that constantly, always attacking and kicking back out. Now they got to think about a shot with six on the shot clock. Dupay has a look up, gets a pick from Miller and goes deep. And Higgins shags down the miss. Outlet, got Baker in front. Victor to his right. Baker takes it himself. I'll tell you, Baker, good slashy move, a good wing player. Gets out in transition and converts. Volunteers by one in overtime. First basket of the second half or the overtime by Del Baker. It certainly came at a good time. 23-1 the last two years, Florida on this floor with a margin of 28 points per game. Not tonight. Harvey slicing through there on his way to the basket, drew a foul. In fact, the only game he lost in two years here. You and I did the game, Kentucky. That's they right. beat Kentucky at celebration time, and less than 48 hours later, they couldn't handle success. They got beat by Mississippi on their own floor. That's right, Ole Miss got them. So many teams have a difficult time handling success. That's why I respect and admire those programs that do it year in and year out, like Duke in North Carolina. Well, this year, North Carolina certainly struggles City, one of the real disappointments in college basketball. But for the years, they've always been right up there on top. What a night by the 6'8 freshman. And if he could improve his range a little bit as a shooter, you need to make him more effective. Boy, well. Two huge free throws. He's worked hard on that free throw line. Gators by one. We're under two minutes remaining in overtime. Victor got it over. Yarbrough's going to fly in on his own, and the rebound is Florida. And it's Harvey. And they did a nice job. Isaiah Victor stepping up to the ball against the trap. Brought it to the weak side. Billy Donovan making some calls. Managing the clock is big now. A minute and a half remaining in overtime. Florida leading by one. Shooting free throws will be big as well, coming down the stretch. Miller from the baseline. Rebound, right almost had it, lost it to Black. A lot of contact out of the interior. It's a very physical basketball game. And Higgins going to call a timeout as he got it into the front court with 1.14 remaining in overtime. Florida leading Tennessee, 70-69. Don't go away. He was perhaps the most brilliant coach who ever lived. Sometimes behind great success, there are things that we'd rather not know about. I'm not here to around this week! I had an eyewitness saying Coach Knight grabbed Neil Reed by the throat. Our sports director came out of the office and said, they have a tape. What if I told you that the tape was only half the story? 30 for 30 presents The Last Days of Night, tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. on ESPN and streaming live on the ESPN app. Sponsored by American Express. Every second. From every play. From every game. Has led to this. Find out who's in. The College Football Playoff Selection Show, Sunday at noon on ESPN. Presented by AT&T. Watch out 
half of Mr. Victor here if you're Florida, baby. Isaiah's the guy that sent it two overtime. Gators leading by one. Tennessee looking to regain the lead here in OT. And again, watch the way by Weeks. Still Tennessee ball. And they're going to hold play just for a quick second for Teddy Dupay to relace his shoe. Blocking out his big right now, Brad. I'm sure Billy Donovan will remind him to huddle. Under a minute in overtime. Yabro in the paint. They wave it off. A foul before the shot. That's going to be on Miller. Well, at least Vincent Yarborough attacked the basketball. He wanted it. He wanted the rock in his hands. He said, I want to make the big play. I'm going to go to the line. He was a McDonald's All-American. He came in with all kinds of expectations. And so many times, it takes a guy a year or two to really, really mature. He was so young. He wasn't 18 until last March. March, March 21st. Yeah. He was the youngest player in Division I. Three of four tonight after hitting that free throw. That was a big one. Ties it at 70, at least momentarily, here in overtime. This would be a monster win for Tennessee if they could come into this place and get a W on the road against Florida. Remember, they've won five in a row in a two-year period in the SEC on the road. Yarborough, two big free throws, but this one far from over. 55 seconds remaining. Gators not trail by one on their home floor. Everybody standing, everybody quiet. Looking for a good shot. They don't have to hurry anything here. But right now, Harvey's got to slide inside. That's where he's effective. And something good can happen off a two-man game. He lays the screen. Here's Weeks for three. Rebound, Harvey on the backside. Good foul, though. Good foul. He was going up the jam right there, Brad. You're right, from the weak side. He was going up to finish and to really finalize. They're going to make him go to the line. That is the jump shot by Weeks. He normally knocks that baby down. And here is Harvey, who's a big-time wind gets man. What a glass eater he is. So Harvey to the line. Hit his last two. Now that I, yep, he ripped the last two. Three in a row. I'll tell you what, this guy for Dan, he seems very confident, very cool. Boy, he was totally geeked out here in the warm-ups before the game. Mile high for this one, and he has produced. He's only a 53% shooter on the free throw line. Yeah, but he's doing a good job tonight. Nice, sir. He's hit his last three. Three in a row. Missed the second, knew he was going to miss it, too, and tried to jump in the lane and do something about it. Instead, it's a lane violation. Lane violation so we're tied at 71 with 30 seconds remaining in overtime. Hey, can we be double OT? I mean, I got a car waiting to take me to Jacksonville. I got to get to Jacksonville for a flight early tomorrow morning. I'm not heading to Ohio State till sometime yeah. tomorrow, so what the heck. I got to meet my buddy Mike Patrick. I haven't seen him in a long time. Oh, here's the trap again. Oh, I feel oh, my weeks. Give it up. Trying to give it up to Wright, and Victor got in the way of that one. Weeks with the steal. Brent Wright was just a step slow attacking the basket. Canyon Weeks with the play of the month. 30 second timeout, Florida. Gators, 30 second timeout. Timeout. 21 seconds remaining in overtime. You wait weeks for a play like this. And there it is. Watch the Kenyon steal. Kenyon came up with it. And there's Kenyon Weeks right into the lane. I like that. You wait weeks for that. And then he kicks it off the right. And there's the contact. Light, a good free throw shooter. Better than 80%. 71-71. Look at Billy D working in that sideline. Let's look at Jerry Green. Also took Oregon to the NCAA tournament for the first time in over 30 years while he was there. They were the highest scoring team in the Pac-10 when he was there for a few seasons. I tell you, I know I'm getting old. When I look at Steve Walford coaching tonight, uh, that's right. Billy Donovan, I remember following him and uh, doing some TV work back there. At the Tommy Amaker with a big win oh, tonight. Wow. We used to do his game. Yeah, yes, I'm sir. getting old with you, partner. Wow. It's so great to see some new stars on a coaching fraternity. That ball was knocked out of bounds by Victor with no foul call. So the yeah, inbound no foul. is Florida's with 21 seconds left. Shot clock is off. They got it into Miller, who's double teamed on the baseline. Yeah. Now right into Pay. And Florida going to play for either some free throws or the last shot for the win. I'm going to go for the last shot. You're home. Oh, Dupay almost gave it up. Right. Eight. Open up. Five. They're struggling with the ball. They're struggling with the ball. Now Tennessee with the ball. Baker for the win. They're, oh, he got fouled. Wait a minute. It's over. That's the end of the first Overtime is time. over, and we go to oh, another. Oh, they wanted the foul. Oh, we got double O T. Curtis Shaw looked up at that clock, and before Baker got to the basket, the gun sounded. I think it was a great call. 
Let's take a look right here. Remember, in college basketball, double zero doesn't finish the game. It's the buzzer and the light on. Florida was really struggling in this possession, Brad. Really struggling with the ball. Nice, nice hustle rhythm. by the Tennessee defense, obviously. Let's see if he gets off. Well, I don't know if we didn't see the light up on top to indicate the game was over. The official might have had a good look at that and the horn. Well, we've got five more minutes at least. Don't go away. Double overtime. We'll be back. We're back at the end of overtime. Was double overtime upcoming. We're tied at 71. A frantic finish to the overtime session as Tennessee came up with a steal. Dell Baker went down the court. Looked like he was going to get a shot up. We're going to take a look at the last six seconds, and we're just going to listen. You're not going to hear the horn, but you're going to hear a whistle. Listen. There you can hear the whistle of Curtis Shaw for one, and Jerry Green says, hey, you know, how about a foul? And none called. We just got a chance to talk to Curtis Shaw. He came over to us. The horn never did sound, but the red light went off. Well, I saw, no, I talked to Curtis Shaw, and really basically what he said, the foul came after. It was double zero, yeah. and he said the horn went off, but no light. Well, oh, that's what it was. Yeah, he no, said you can't hear it because it's so loud exactly. in here, and the light didn't go off, but he right. saw the double zero exactly. and blew his whistle, and you could hear the whistle distinctly in that replay. Well, last double overtime game Wow, was 16 years ago. Tennessee left with a W. Who knows, might be 75-74 again. We're tied at 71. And underway in double OT. All that great riding by Rich and Stewart tonight for Sports Center, and they're still waiting. And they're waiting and they're waiting and they're waiting. <laughs> well, Stewart and I know Rich got some new lines they're gonna lay on us tonight, too. <laughs> Baker will inbound. Victor Yarborough, Black, and Higgins with the ball in hand. It's a five on the floor for Tennessee. They got a holding foul inside on Isaiah Victor. This Tennessee team united. Seems to have some real good chemistry. It's so important for that when you got teams that have chemistry that enjoy playing with each other. So Victor, who's been the big star tonight for Tennessee, steps up and drills a free throw. He made a big shot to send his baby into overtime on an offensive rebound. Look at the Tennessee bench. 21 for Isaiah Victor. 22. He's not struggling and on a free throw line. No, he's not. Two-point lead. Tennessee in double overtime. See if Florida can get their offense back in view. They had a horrible last trip down court. Right foul by C.J. Black. I'll tell you one thing. You're not getting just open shots against this Tennessee defense. They're going to challenge you on a shot. They're going to be physical. It's going to be a lot of body contact. Mike Miller has really been quiet the last 15 yes. minutes. He's been quiet really the second half. Two field goals in the second half. Jerry Green under control all the time in that sideline. Worked under Jer Roy Williams, part of a staff with Matt Doherty. The Irish got really slammed yeah, fast today by Rutgers. Brent Wright, a good free throw shooter. I should never have said that. Yeah, He's better than 80%. Three for four before that one. Parker checks in. And Weeks goes out. This crowd is really quiet. Well, we know they're quiet because he's shooting a free throw, but it comes up empty. And again, they miss the free throw and crash the lane. So Tennessee with a two-point lead. That has quieted the Rowdy Reptiles momentarily anyway with 420 left in double overtime. I think they're stunned. I think they're shocked. I thought they're gonna they thought they're gonna blow this baby away. Victor, great balance. Uh, Nuria back here. It would have been over and back right there. Three-pointer maybe hurried a little bit. Harvey, nice rebound, and then fouled by Yarbrough. Harvey is a man on a glass. You said Victor looked like a ballerina there. Looked like he was running for the Ring Lombard and Bailey <laughs> Circus there, working the... Uh... Here's a look. Harvey says, watch out, Isaiah. I'm the man right here, baby. I am the man. I'm the bomb. I'm going to be on Stuart Scott show in the Sports Center. At the line for Florida. 18 points for the freshman. 
did not look good the last time he shot a free throw, made three in a row, and then the fourth was indicative of his totals when you look at his numbers, 53%. He went flying in the lane knowing that it was going to be off the mark. And he's still trying to find it again now. Florida really hurting himself on a free throw line here late. Got 12 rebounds, 18 points, a double-double for Mr. Harvey. Got a lot of playing time. Haslam in foul trouble, fouled out. Fourth double-double, by the way, for Denal this year. Here goes the pressure with Bonner up on top. A lot of size, not much quickness, but size. Good spacing by Tennessee. Good spacing offensively. Higgins again takes control at the point, calms things down. Gabro got around Bonner, trying to leave it for Black. CJ saved it on the baseline. Good agility by Black for a big guy. Nice hustle on defense by Florida, but Yarbrough's open momentarily, and he drills it. Nobody puts a hand up. What a big three by Vincent Yarborough. Volunteers by full now in double overtime. He's become a super south this year. Pay with Parker and now Bonner. Nice little weave going for Florida, and Bonner's foul as he goes to the hole. Tennessee foul is on number 44. Mike Miller's got star ability. He's going to have to step up right now and help his club in the last three minutes. They're going to need some productivity out of the sophomore. Matt Bonner, 14 out of 16 from the free throw line this year. It's his first trip to the strike tonight. 6'9", freshman, and he nails that one. He was a big-time shooter in high school. And the fingers slightly crossed for Udonis Haslam. A little bit of a prayer watching the free throws. So Bonner goes up and he got them both. Nice rotation, good arc, good follow through. Did his job, converted two. Now they bring the experienced player right on the floor. We might be here all night. We're in double overtime with 3.23 left. And it's 76-74 Tennessee. Oh, dangerous pass. Dupay went for the steal and it's thrown away by Victor. Dangerous pass right there. He threw the lob in the middle of the field. That's dangerous. You're right. You may be here all night. I'm calling the boss up, Frank Sheriff, and I want to be paid overtime. I want some OT. And he wants to give you a T.O. <laughs> Two-point game and double OT. Who's going to make the big shot? Who's going to look to take the big shot? Where's Michael Miller? Where's the star? Harvey's the guy that wants it. Skip pass inside, knocked away from it. So with 20 seconds on the shot clock, Florida will inbound. It's hard to believe when you look at Harvey. Look at his body, his strength, and he's only a kid that played high school last year. Amazing. See, Michael Miller's got a step to the basketball. Baker's trying to deny him the ball. Hey, looking for a pick. Got one from Harvey. He's going to launch one off the glass. Eddie Dupay with that little one off the window. John Wooden used to teach that at UCLA. Nice pick by Harvey. Tied at 76 in double OT. That's the good pass against the trap, the diagonal one. Back it out, manage the clock, put it in the hands of the point guard. Baker double team. Has to get it over to Higgins. He's got an opening. Got it! What a big one from Shaker High, so high The kid had a knee injury as a junior. Everybody backed down on him except Tennessee. They stayed with him, and did they get a good one? Dupay looking for an answer with his three, and Victor clears the glass. Volunteers by three on that. John Higgins triple. His only three-pointer of the night is 33rd of the year. Boy, it was a big one for number 42. They are really, really stepping up with each possession. We're under two minutes in double overtime, and Jerry Green says, let's just talk about this for a second, guys. Playing with a lot more confidence. 158 remaining in double overtime. Tennessee leading Florida by three. Here comes the rain. Double overtime, Tennessee leading by three with under two minutes remaining now in this extra session. Here's a kid, a freshman, missed most of his senior season last year at Shaker Heights, Ohio, with a knee injury, who rips a huge three. And on the night, one for seven, but that one is all they're going to remember if they win this game. A kid that was heavily recruited by the Big Ten before that injury. And he is the star of Tennessee's double overtime so far. Isaiah Victor for the most part for the most part's been the star of the game. 
Well, you know, Higgins was four for 19 in the SEC, shooting the three coming into this game. Prior to that, he was really shooting well in non-conference play from the three-point line. In fact, when you look at his numbers, 32 of his 41 field goals have been threes. And as you said, had that knee injury actually happened his junior year, and then his senior year didn't play, as you said, till late in his senior year. That's getting down to real crunch time now for Florida. Their back is against the wall here, and they have quieted this crowd down. Florida's got two freshmen on the floor right now, and Nelson and Harvey. And Higgins will be in the backcourt waiting for Dell Baker's inbound pass with 158 remaining in the second overtime. Tony Harris filed out way back in regulation. Seems like it was about an hour ago. I know. You would have thought they would really be in major trouble, but they've held their poise. And have done a really good job. He gets handling the ball. They need a stop. Absolutely mandatory. They need a stop here. Higgins deep three. And Miller with a rebound. Could be six on the shot clock when Higgins lets that thing go. He's going with Nelson right now on the floor instead of Dupay. Right wide open. He ties. Good execution, swung the ball to the top of the circle, wide open. Nothing like that. Three, and he get him left. Hey, could this be? Three OTs, three OTs, good. We're under 80 seconds, oh. and we're tied again. And now the Johnny Reptiles are right well, baby. Yabro trying to pack it in, and a foul as he got it into Black. He was fouled from behind by Brent Wright. Not a bad foul. Not a bad foul putting Black on the free throw line where he has struggled. struggled. Yep, he's one for five tonight. I'm glad we don't have that rule in college basketball where you can take the ball out of bounds and you can protect and hide. The ones we used at the beginning of the season. The yeah. Yeah. Well, Black now is one for six. The art of basketball, Brad, for many a year is the ability to make free throws. I think he's got to step back a couple more inches. Yeah, maybe go to the three-point line. There, you got it. He got one to go down, one out of two. I think Jerry Green will take that. Yep. I think he'll take that. A one-point lead, one minute remaining one in minute, double overtime. One minute remaining. Again, the crowd goes silent. Florida on their offensive set. They're going to block out Harvey if there's a missed shot, Tennessee. I don't think Mike Miller's had a point since about 15 minutes remaining. No, I agree. I said that earlier. He has really played very quiet. Parker gets it out to Miller. He'll try one here. Not even close. Rebound to Jabra. Not even close. 30 seconds left in double overtime. How huge would this be if Tennessee can hold on? What a big win this would be for the Vols. They've got a whole week off before Auburn goes to Knoxville next Tuesday night as part of, of ESPN's coverage. And if they win this game, it would be their sixth straight on the road in Southeastern Conference play. Try and do it in that sometime. It's not very easy. And that is a statement. That's a really a tribute to this guy right here. Get this boys does a great job preparing. Got his team prepared for this environment. He's always under control. Always under control. Push that North Carolina Asheville as well. So 23.8 seconds remaining in our second overtime. And ninth ranked Florida on the ropes. Trailing 14th ranked Tennessee by a point, and the ball's going to the free throw line. Even if Tennessee can hit both free throws, it's still a chance for the Gators to send it to another session. And this is where you got to start thinking as you get late in the game about not allowing them to get a three-point opportunity. Del Baker, the guy who almost got a shot off. Then right went to the sideline with five. Made a big three. A little bit earlier. Baker missed it. Free throws killing Tennessee. Free throws, free throws, free throws. Timeout Florida. Billy Donovan says, get your butts over here. He's waving frantically at his club, trying to set up an offensive play, knowing that he's going to get a chance not just to tie, but to win the game. Also icing him a little bit, making him think a little bit more about that, Mr. Baker. Going to the foul line. Here's Higgins. Yes, sir. Mr. Higgins knocking down the trifecta. How big that three has become in college basketball. And here's Brent Wright prior to fouling out. Top of the circle. The medium range jump shot is non-existent. Right. It seems it's either layup or it's going to be the three. Yep. Either a slam dunk or it's coming from outside the yard. 
I think teams that win really excel in four areas. Special situations, making free throws, attacking pressure, that's one. And then medium range shots, low post play, and knocking the trifecta down. Maybe just as important as the free throw coming up is who's on the floor for Florida. It's Harvey, Weeks, Bonner, Miller, and Nelson. Baker at the free throw line to try to give the Volunteers a two-point lead. And they're going to block out in case he misses this. And he did. And the rebound is Bonner's. And they almost lost the rebound. Now Florida's got a chance to win this game with a deuce. All they need is two. And remember, Harvey on the offensive glass is a terror. Ten seconds remaining. Nelson looks up, looking for a pick. Oh, he's going to fire a three. Didn't need that. What a bad shot. They what did it. not need that shot. Absolutely not a heady play right there by Brett Nelson. A little panic. I think he panicked with the basketball. Took a deep, deep three-point shot. Teddy Dupay looking through closed eyes at that one. Nelson, the guy that's in there for him. Yeah, Brett really panicked right there. I think he really lost concept of where he was, the shot clock. I mean, he's way behind the arc. And doesn't give anybody really a chance to teammate Teddy Dupay. Now free throws coming up by Higgins. And he misses badly. Three seconds now. Remember, if he scores, you're going to put it in bounds. Clock doesn't start until it touches a player on the floor. Tennessee putting everybody basically back. Higgins got the second. Chance to tie and send it to a triple overtime or a win. Bonner going deep with the ball, trying to get it to Harvey. Intercepted by Victor and Yarborough. And a jump ball. Wait a minute. Possession arrow is Florida's, but I don't think they have enough time to get a shot off. Oh, unless they put time back on the clock. And that is a question. Is there any time going back on the clock? Apparently not. You need point three to get a shot. There's no way they can get a shot. No way they can get a legitimate shot. Got to go to the basket with it. It's over. It's Tennessee over. wins on the road That's in the double overtime. Wow. Six straight Southeastern Conference win. It was a marathon. And I don't think the coaches on either side are all that crazy about the others right now. A little bit of talking going on. And now Billy Donovan says, okay. They lose it. And an 11-game home winning streak goes by the boards for Florida as well. Tennessee, ranked 14th. Goes to 16 and 2. They go to the head of the class in the SEC East at 4 and 1 with an 81 79 win. That's going to do it from Gainesville.